for you know the time and everything being so flexible right. we are now live streaming facebook live all right yeah okay facebook world after after listening to that talk of uh ruben with Eckhart Tolle, I, I, I feel guilty doing this. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they were on Facebook, right? They were on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Which to me, so this is the, this is what we're talking about, Rodrigo. I just listened to um podcast that was also shared on YouTube. And this guy's going off the grid for one month, but right before he goes off the grid, he has an hour-long interview with Eckhart Tolle. And uh, and he's talking about you know like the evils of of being continuously connected, and continuously receiving and transmitting information, and it's he touches on really really valid points, but at the same time, they're doing it on YouTube. <laughs> so, mm. so well, he's a, and he's a when I saw it, he's a conservative columnist, so I was very surprised to see Eckhart Tolle. But, Anyway, he, he just came back on the grid, this guy, and he didn't know that Cuomo had resigned. He didn't know. It was so funny because he has a show where someone tells him what happened during the month. <laughs> and he was like, oh. what? <clears throat> okay. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Anyway. All right. We should do that in Los Cabos. We should do that in Los Cabos. <laughs> this I think that would be amazing. We would be surprised of what happened in a month. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally surprised. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So um, let's start recording for the radio. And uh, we're going to be recording in. Welcome to Cabo Mill News and Community Update in English. This is Corey Riggs. And today, if you listen to us on the radio, it is September 5th. And we're happy to have you here. Or you can always check us out on Facebook Live at Cabo Mill News. And I am here with Claudia Velo. Claudia, how the heck are you? I'm back. I'm back home. Welcome back. Happy to see you back in Los Cabos. And I'm doing really, really well. You know, we had, uh, maybe you didn't know this because you were gone, but we uh -oh. had a hurricane scare. And uh, Fortunately, nothing happened. Everybody was prepared as, and um, so it all went well. So I'm happy, I'm good. Yeah, I think Odile got yeah. us, I, I think Odile got us to the point where you just, everyone prepares now, no matter what, if it looks like it's a little bit threatening, people prepare, which is a good thing. And it was nice to see it. I, of course, I was watching the hurricane and it looked like it, it, it just kept moving over, over, over. And then we didn't even get any rain. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, it was it was it was great being. I mean, I was in Arizona for uh, almost a month, and it was interesting because I, I think we've talked about this before. Arizona is completely open. There's no masks. There's no there are there people wearing masks? Yes, but it's not a. So it's interesting coming back as soon as I cross the border. There's masks everywhere, and and so it's just. I'm not saying anything about it except that it's interesting being back in the. <laughs> but I understand that our alert level has gone down. It has. It has. Last week, um, it was announced and we are down to level two, which is great for a lot of businesses because now maximum occupancy is allowed at 70% of the, of the installed capacity and new sectors, new businesses can now open. And even um, a week before here for the for the municipality of Los Cabos, it was announced that restaurants slash bars could stay open until 1 a.m. And things are picking up. Everybody is complying with uh, this awareness of the importance of continuing to implement the protocols that have been in place all this time and that really have placed Los Cabos in the map for people wanting to get away from all the madness that this pandemic has caused. So great news, we're at level two. The health great. authorities have said that it is expected that the number of cases might improve, increase a little bit, up to 10% once people start getting out more and more mobility is happening, but hopefully we'll be able to, to stay at level two and then move on to green, which is kind of like what it is now called the new normal. And that would be great news. But but so far, so good. 
everybody is in a very optimistic and positive state of mind here in Los Cabos. So I think with that and the fact that Nora didn't harm anything in our community mm -hmm. or in our state, um, it's a just really good news so far and uh, looking forward to having kind of like a quiet rest of the summer, but then things have picked up, uh, have pick up, picked up in for the high season come late October. Yeah, every, everything is so positive. And, and the only foreboding that I have, and I, I don't even know if I want to say this, but no, the, next, the next named storm will have an O in front of it. And I just remember back Odeal in... Uh, and yeah. so hopefully, hopefully that's not going to, that's not, so if we had Nora, so it would be a, a male's name, right? Isn't that how it works? So that, so it'll be an, maybe it'll be Oscar or. Are, are we being gender equal now with, with the naming of this? Oh, no, I don't know if that's, if, if, if we're that politically correct in the hurricane. I don't even area. know. I, I don't even know. <laughs> Well, good. Well, any other any other news? Or, because we want, we're going to get to Rodrigo Sponda, who's with us today from the, the director of Los Cabos Tourism Board. And the, the person who I would say is really responsible for making Cabo the main the main place to visit on the map. But it, before we get to him, what anything else, Claudia, that we should talk about in terms of well, news? The other, the other bit of news is um, children are going back to school. And it, it has been a huge debate. Are we ready to go back to live classes in the classroom? Are we not? You have to keep in mind that, that in Mexico, public schools are a huge part of the education system. In, and it, they are not like in the United States. And the truth is that for the last 18 months, um, public schools have been grossly under budget. And that means that they have been, quote unquote, abandoned to a point. So in order to prepare for, for the return to school, a lot of these schools need to, to be truly refurbished. It's not just a, a, a coat of paint, but they need to be fixed because some of them were vandalized. Some, some had some of their electric installations stolen, things like that. And so it's been a huge issue, plus the whole are the, are the children going to start spreading COVID again? Um, and it has been decided that the schools will reopen, but it will really be up to the parents to decide whether they're going to school or not. And then the schools are going to let parents know how often are the children going to have classes. So it's not like schools open and all the kids are going back to school. It's going to be more like so many of the children in the group will go, I don't know, Monday and Tuesday and others will go Thursday and when, whatever. I mean, it's going to be decided how often because they do want to keep the classes to a smaller number of students. And keep in mind in Mexican public schools, the average number of students per group in the past used to be above 45. So that's wow. a big change. And that also means that online classes will continue and some parents may decide to just keep the children at home. Also, um, as of this point and at, at the last press conference, it was important to mention that in Baja California Sur, over 50% of the population has had full vaccinations and over 82% of the population has had at least one dose. So that's giving a certain uh, peace of mind to a lot of people. All, all teachers have been vaccinated, but the debate continues. Um, but because we were expecting the hurricane, the return to classes was scheduled for August 30th, and it was pushed up to September 13th by um, the governor of the state. And so that's the plan at this point. Children are going back to school on September 13th. And uh, everybody, I mean, there are protocols in place, the schools are getting ready. So we will see how that goes. Um, but that's still a, a big debate right now in, in our community. And I know that most of the, of the foreign community sends their children to private school, but it is something that you need to be aware of because maybe the people that some of your staff does have to deal with this new reality of, having to send the children to school some days and not other days, et cetera. 
Well, I know a lot of my friends here are so excited that that the, their kids are back in school because they can finally they can finally do some work at home or have a little peace because it's it's been a it's been a tough tough situation for people with kids. Yeah. And to, to always have the kids with them, making sure they get online. And when you have younger children, to make someone get online, it's, it's very, very difficult. And so I know that a lot of my friends that have children are, I just have Charlie, the dog. So I don't, I don't have children, I don't have to worry about that. But, but I know that my friends that do, they're, they're, very, they're very excited. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to, I, I, I had the chance to drive back down the Baja. I just arrived two days ago, Claudia. And I have to say, there's, there's, a, there's a point in the Baja that I recommend. First of all, I recommend that everyone drive the Baja at least once in your life, because it is the most beautiful drive. And especially around Loreto and there, there's some other areas on the way. But there's this, there's this very interesting tree. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can check it out. And you were telling me the name, what's the name of this? Bujum. It's a Bujum tree. When you drive, when you drive here, it's it's like past Ensenada, probably, a, I don't know, 100 miles past Ensenada, and then all the way to Guerrero Negro, it's just full of these trees. And it looks like you are on an alien planet. You, 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 I think you said you think it's a Dr. Seuss book, right? Oh, it reminds me of, of Dr. Zeus uh, illustrations. Yes. And, and I remember seeing those. I mean, if you caught them blooming, that's super unusual. Um, but they're just so alien looking. But I remember driving and thinking, oh, wow, I bet Dr. Zeus came here. And that's how he got in. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he should have. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's it's a it's an incredible drive, and I had the chance to stay in a in what is it La Mission de Loreto, the, the uh -huh. hotel right on the Malecon, mm -hmm. and uh, really incredible place. It's wow, I, I'm always blown away. I think it's just been re remodeled, and it just it looks it's just beautiful. But it's a great place to stay if you're if you if you take a trip to Loreto. If you haven't been to Loreto, you have to go. It's oh, yeah. it's incredible. It's, it's amazing. incredible. Did you know, in. little trivia about Loreto, did you know that that was the first place where the Spaniards finally landed and were able to set up a mission? And it took them a long, long time. And the original virgin, the, the virgin from Loreto, uh, which was brought to shore by Padre Quino, by, who was a, a Franciscan missionary, what, is still there. So wow. you can still see it. So it's, it's something. And the chain of all the missions that go all the way to San Francisco in, in California started there in Loreto. That was the first mission that was ever built in, in, in the entire of the Californias, all three of them. Wow. So it's, it's really a momentous occasion to be there for the first time so and Padre Quino has a big deal to do with Arizona too their San Javier mission in Tucson that's a very famous mission that, that all uh, those missions yeah. yeah we're all connected we're all connected and, yeah. and it's it, it's interesting too I don't know if, if I, we've talked about this before but you know Los Cabos is in the Sonoran Desert and it's the same Sonoran Desert that goes up into Arizona top of Sonora and New Mexico, Phoenix, all, all those areas were, were actually in the, in the Sonoran Desert. Now there's part of the Baja that's not the Sonoran Desert, but we're still, and that's why we have a, a lot of the flora and fauna that's, that's very similar. Of mm -hmm. course, it's interesting, the, the cactuses we have here are small cousins to the saguaros because the saguaros are huge. When you go to yeah. Tucson or Phoenix, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. All right, well, we have spent a lot of time speaking and Rodrigo has been very patient sitting here Thank you, Rodrigo. That's very nice of you to, to hang out and listen to our banter. But we, we, we were hoping that we could get you out of the water. Uh, and I know that we, you might have been swimming with sharks today. I don't know what's happening, but we wanted to bring you to do some work and get you on the radio because I know you don't work very much. So we just wanted to, <laughs> we wanted, <laughs> we wanted to, to get you here and but welcome. Rodrigo Esponda is the director of the Los Cabos Tourism Board. And and as, as mentioned before, probably the one person that has brought everybody together and made Los Cabos the best destination in the world where everyone is flocking to right now in, in times of this pandemic 
what a job that, that him and his team have done to make this place so accommodating to everyone. Everyone feels safe and welcome, Rodrigo, to the show. Hello, Corey. Hello, Claudio. Very nice to be with you. Uh, but, you know, on the serve, you know, this is a community work, what we have done uh, of Los Cabos as a, as a safe place to visit or the best destination to visit in the context of COVID-19. It is Rodrigo, um, but somebody has to lead the band. <laughs> and so that's your job. And uh, I mean, we know we are in a community that, that knows how to come together when we have to come together. We might not agree in a lot of things, but when it's time to come together, we do. How do you see the way things are progressing and this new push to, to level number two that everybody's so happy about? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you were describing it uh, very, very accurately, uh, Claudia, on, on what it is going to imply to schools, businesses, and, and, and tourism. Uh, I think we, we need to continue the in, in implementing the protocols in the most uh, strict ways. Uh, you were speaking about vaccination as well, and I think uh, the only way to move forward is uh, with three key elements that you uh, mentioned. The vaccination campaigns that people need to continue participating and continue to follow the rules and the guidelines of the medical authorities. The uh, number two is the protocols. Even though that we are going to be allowing 70% capacity, everyone needs to continue following the, the protocols. And the third one is testing. We continue, we have to continue testing and continue to be very responsible because as, as we have seen, the virus can change uh, very fast uh, and, and things can, can have um, consequences. So if we do things right, I think we're going to have a very positive uh, fall. We have in advanced reservations already uh, a very successful September. If, if things are as in the books already, we will have the most uh, successful and busy September in history in Los Cabos. Uh, Wow. with the U.S. travelers and the Canadian travelers that are going to start coming back on September as the air is scheduled that way. Um, in the Canadian market, there are interesting things. There are new airlines uh, that are planning to come in the fall to the destination for the first time in many years. Um, we will have new players uh, in, the, in the Canadian market, uh, which is definitely very good. More competition is going to be a benefit for travelers with more options. And, uh, and then moving forward, October also looks uh, promising already in the, in the books uh, with some new connectivity from the United States. So let's see if we are successful and things get under control, we will have a closing of 2021 that is gonna be a historic achievement uh, given the complexities that we are facing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, and so do you do you see, do you foresee that the recovery will be sooner than than it had been forecasted for well for it, community? it was already sooner. We were expecting to get back uh, in, in summer and we started uh, having more international visitors to the I think we froze. I think we, I think we lost him uh, for so a moment. That, oh, there he is. You're back. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I was saying that May, June, July, and August, we are going to have more international visitors than what we had in 2019. And that was uh, not expected. But if things continue well, we're going to be closing 2021 just a tiny bit in the total amount of travelers below 2019, but just a bit. Wow. And that, I think that is going to be very possible. A segment that, that it is very, very important for Los Cabos and has been very important for Los Cabos for many years, and I think was the one that, that I don't know, suffered the most during the, these last two years, year and a half was the groups, uh, conventions, and incentive trips. And uh, we are seeing some of those come back. Um, I mean, Los Cabos just hosted the, the, the World Forum. Uh, how, how is that, that segment doing? And how is that segment 
within our community working to attract back all these groups? Are you seeing a lot of these new kind of hybrid um, events where, where technology is playing a big part? Well, that's a, a key, key question, Claudia, and you were totally right. We, we, we just hosted a World's Meeting Forum with uh, meeting planners and meeting organizers from eight countries. And, and it was a very successful event where each of the attendees had to go through a protocol, a testing, before leaving if they are coming from the United States. They, they, the company that organized the event uh, sent them to, to, to get a, a test where they were leaving before traveling. Uh, they were, and this is something that was not spoken, but there were two cases of meeting planners that couldn't come because uh, they, they tested positive uh, where they were. Um, once they come, everyone again has to go through the testing and then the protocols are in place. And then it was a very successful way of how the meetings, uh, events and convention programs have to take place as, uh, with this uh, type of testing program that uh, would in some way create a bubble. Uh, but and the, in the RFPs, the request for proposals uh, moving forward, we have seen an uptrend uh, that started to, to slow down a little bit in the, in the uptrend uh, because of the Delta variants and the, and the situations, because groups and conventions move, um, are organized and confirmed six, nine, uh, a, month, a year earlier. Um, so we're thinking of 2022. So in the books already, there are a good number of programs, not as many as we had in 2019, um, with, with some particularities. Uh, they are smaller. Uh, a few of them are hybrid, as World's Meeting Forum was offering the option to be connected in a hybrid model, and some of the speakers participated remotely. So I think that trend is going to continue and is going to be very positive for the meetings industry because the reach is going to be uh, much bigger. Instead of just having uh, 300 people attending the event, the Congress or the meeting, then you would be able to have 150 physically in person in the destination and then probably 500 or 600 connected remotely and some people are participating with uh, keynote speakers and, and uh, other presenters uh, from different parts. So I think that that is going to continue. The destination has the technology. Fortunately, in many of the hotels in order to, to provide that type of opportunity and the suppliers are stepping up uh, in order to have the, the accommodations um, in, the, in the right level, uh, because it implies a lot of uh, logistics uh, to have a, a hybrid meeting. It, it, it's, it's not as easy as uh, anyone would, would think of. Hey, Rodrigo, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna need to take a break. We'll be right back, but please stay with us. We'll, we'll, we'll get you some more information from Rodrigo Esponda, the Los Cabos Tourism Board. We'll be right back. All right. And that was perfect timing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Rodrigo. You, you finished right on time. I didn't, I, didn't have to even, <laughs> I didn't even have to cut you off. You just, whoo, right into it. <laughs> Even at that, you're perfect, Rodrigo. No, no. <laughs> it's so no, nice no, to no. see you relaxed because every every time you're you're all you know like business like. <laughs> I like seeing you relax. <laughs> it's, it's it's Saturday, so I'm you know having my coffee and reading the newspaper. <laughs> you still read newspapers? I. Wow. And Telmex, once again, infinitum. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have Carlos Slim on the show. We and should. <laughs> Carlos out. Slim needs to come on the show. Yeah, find out what's the deal with the internet. I still well, think that, that, that um, it has to do with, with everybody being online and not having enough bandwidth. Not having enough bandwidth. The, uh, the, um, the La Mission Hotel in Loreto, the, the owner who I actually met on a plane on oh. coming, he was going to Mexico City and I met him on a plane. And he told me that Carlos Slim goes there all the time. So oh, that's, really? that's like one of his favorite places to go. <laughs> he, and and but he walks into the kitchen and says hi to everybody. And so. At some point there was, there was a rumor years ago, years, years ago, um, 
where where that said that that Carlos Slim was planning on doing something with marinas and things like that, and he was seen quote unquote because th there were only rumors. I mean, I'm sure he does go there for for vacation and whatever. But but at some point he was uh, very very frequently visiting Loreto because there was supposed to be something happening there from mm -hmm. from a development re related to him, but. I guess that didn't happen, and and it was before the two thousand seven, two thousand eight, big big. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, so yeah. Okay. Well, I'm Loretto, sure. there's a there's a lot happening in Loretto, right now. It's amazing. It's really really beautiful. I feel like I'm I'm head of the tourism board for Loretto right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's promote it. I know I know Alaska is flying now to Loretto. Oh wow! Yeah. Hmm. And that will hopefully take more people. And driving from from Cabo to Loreto, if you if you as you go past Constitución, yeah, the first time you see the Sierra, it's amazing because mm. it, it, I mean it's all the different layers and all the colors. It's just beautiful, beautiful landscape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you did you have some some almejas tatemadas? I did not. I don't like almejas. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll still I be don't. friends. We'll still... <laughs> Remember, we went to dinner it, it, and I didn't eat them. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I had one. I had one. I don't. They have to be cooked for sure. Like I cannot yeah. have. I cannot have. Uh, the, raw. the ones in Loreto are are kind of like charred. On mm -hmm. the of the shell is charred, and then they. They put stuff in them and they're already chopped and they cook kind of like in their own juice. And mm -hmm. oh my lord, they You're are making me so hungry, Claudia. Delicious. I they're haven't so had breakfast delicious. yet. Anybody <laughs> who thinks they don't like almejas, they need to go to Loreto and have almejas tatemadas. The closest you can get to the real thing is go to um, Tres Sirenas. Okay. At, at which is kind of like close to Medano. They, because Edith, as you know, she's she's a huge um, advocate for, for regional cuisine. And the, the Armejas Tatemadas there are really, really good. And you get me talking about food and I can talk forever. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we, well, let's go back and we'll, 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 finish, we'll finish the program up and, and uh, we yep. 20, 27 minutes, right? 27, yes. All right. All right. And we're going back in three. Welcome back to Cabinet News and Community Update in English with Corey Riggs and Claudia Velo. We are speaking with Rodrigo Esponda. And again, if you are listening to us on the radio, that's great, but you got to go check us out on Facebook, Facebook Live at Cabo Meal News. You get lots of bonus material because you heard a break on the radio but you should hear what actually happens over the break and you can hear it and see it. And Claudia explains the food like nobody else. And she goes into almejas, which are oysters, that it's an unbelievable explanation. And I don't like almejas, but I want to eat the ones she just described. So Claudia, you are an amazing descriptive person. So you got to go check us out on Facebook, on Facebook Live. Especially when it comes to food, I'm good at that. <laughs> We had a whole conversation about chiles and nogada, which are the tradition, which is one of Mexico's traditional dishes for September, because September is the month where we do celebrate Mexican independence, not Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> uh, and uh, and chiles and nogada are one of those dishes. So maybe maybe we'll talk about that at some other time. Let's uh, we'll, we'll yeah. do that. Well, we we got Rodrigo back. We 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 lost yeah. him for a moment, but. He, he is back. Rodrigo, how are you? you? You're back with us? Yes, I'm back. I'm sorry that my internet is, is not that good this morning. But well, we, we called Carlos Slim uh, and complained. <laughs> we, and we asked, we, asked to, we asked to have him on the show uh, to talk about why the internet is messing up and why Telmax is not doing what it's supposed to do. So, so hopefully we'll hear back from him, have him on the show, and have him explain to us why you got cut off. But Rodrigo, we were talking about groups. <laughs> we were talking about groups. 
And I don't, I don't remember where we were. Claudia, do you remember what we were? Where well, I think, I think Rodrigo finished right perfectly. Time. Perfectly, yeah. perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so the recovery looks good. Things are good. I, I think this is, this is not a loaded question, Rodrigo. And, and, and I think you're, you, you know that we, we're, it's a conversation amongst friends. How do you foresee or what do you expect the reaction of the community to be, to being at a lower uh, alert level, moving towards the new normal? And, and how do you think people will react in, in our community? Well, I think everyone is in some way expecting this to, to, to happen. I believe that if um, there are some key Key concerns, of course, uh, in terms of the mobility. As the mobility increases, we need to make sure that the number of cases continues to be under control. I think the authorities uh, and the private sector have done a very good uh, job in uh, working together and um, knowing what works and what doesn't work. And they know how to uh, make sure that the businesses need to comply with certain things in order to, to, to get uh, things uh, on, on, on some level. Um, the, the hotels, for example, have done an amazing job uh, adjusting the, the processes internally and keeping their, their employees uh, uh, in, 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 a, in a good shape, uh, vaccinated, with medical support and and with with good medical conditions. One thing that I need I, we need to, to stress is that the the formal jobs that um, are in Los Cabos. Uh, if you see, if you go back to when we started to to talk about uh, the the implications of COVID nineteen in the destination, Baja California Sur was the second state in number of formal jobs being lost. And then mm -hmm. the number one was Quintana Roo. And then, but we were very close and, and the impact in, 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 in percentage, if we, if we measure to the level of employment in December of 2019 was uh, 15, 19%. Um, and, and since that time, the formal employment is been moving, moving up. Uh, so up to July, there, there were, less than 1% of formal employment uh, that needed to be recovered in the destination. So that is, I think, a very important thing because that means that the community is getting their jobs and their benefits back. And that's what we need to, to make sure that that continues because tourism provides such a good level to the communities in terms of uh, cultural benefits, social benefits, but also economic benefits. That that's why people are working so hard in, in this industry. So I think uh, that is going to be key. If we recover those jobs and then we create new jobs, that is going to be a milestone for the destination. And, and there are new, new hotels opening even, I mean, within the next few months um, and going into next year. So the expectation of new job creation is, is quite likely, I imagine, right? Exactly. There are new hotels coming up. Villa Valencia is going to be open uh, in the corridor before the year ends. And then uh, there are very interesting projects for next year, for 2022. The San Regis is uh, really speeding up and, and uh, the residences and condos on, on the San Regis and uh, Kivira area uh, have already uh, been sold. And some other projects that are in the destination uh, have been definitely stepping up. So it's going to be an interesting 2022. If we close in a positive way 2021, 2022 is going to be very positive and the strengthening of the destination in terms of the responsibility and how we have been acting will be a, a big gain uh, for whatever we do. The other thing, we know that the, the there's a new administration coming both for the state government and for the municipality. Um, have you been in touch with them? Is there a transition? How is that going to affect the way that Los Cabos as a municipality and Baja, I know you're not involved with Baja California Sur, but at the end of the day, Los Cabos kind of like leads the, the push for promotion and, and for tourism in the state. How, how is that going? going? <laughs> period. <laughs> I, won't, I won't elaborate on that. 
well, Los Cabos Tourism Board is a is a state trust because the three percent is collected and then it's a state uh, tax that is collected. So we are uh, definitely we have to be related and regulated by all the state uh, uh, laws. Uh, so we we have been in contact with the new administration, uh, not now but since since uh, early early times and the the. You know, the Tourism Board is a technical organization that we are not politically affiliated to any party or any particular situation. And you know the team in Los Cabos Tourism Board, they are all young guys uh, focused on their specific area. Uh, there, there is a small uh, group of people who are 15 in total in the, in the, in the mm -hmm. Tourism Board. Um, and we report to a committee that um, it's composed by five seats three of them on the private sector. Uh, the state participates with two seats on that committee and uh, they understand that we are a, a technical uh, organization that we contribute to the economic benefit of their region and of the community and that we are not politically affiliated. So, um, I, and the tourism board was created 22 years ago. So uh, I'm, I'm sure that is going to continue and that is what is uh, truly relevant that the, the tax that is collected is invested in promotion and that all the positive things that we have been discussing are related to fair. Uh, so I think it's going to be a, um, a, a very successful uh, uh, change of administration uh, because here the, the, it, there is an alignment in the vision that uh, tourism has to continue and that's the only economic benefit uh, that uh, we can contribute uh, to Baja California. Sur. I have a question about the, the I know we just the, we had the ATP event that it came what was that a month ago now Claudia and what a what a great event are there any big events that we're working to attract I don't know if we can talk about that or what this, what is but are there other big events like that that we are looking to attract well there are some events that we are trying to to get for 2022 uh, 2021, uh, you know, it was very difficult to, to make sure that a big event, the ATP, as you know, there were no public, no, uh, it, it was just a few people who could attend uh, to see the, the, the games, but no spectators uh, were, were allowed. And that is difficult to do it with, for example, the Ironman competition. So it's difficult to, or it was very difficult to confirm early in the year, a, a competition with uh, 2,000 uh, people uh, running around the destination mm -hmm. and the logistics mm -hmm. and the mobility that this would create. So not uh, for the um, continuing of, of the year, the film festival is going to take place uh, in, a, in a hybrid model with a, a few people attending in person, but uh, also with this uh, remote uh, participation and uh, people being able to watch the movies uh, remotely. But there is going the, the film festival is going to take place this this year. Um, but for next year, I'm sure that we will have uh, very interesting uh, events uh, that we have already been discussing. Um, there are some, for example, there are some specific uh, industry tourism industry related events that we're looking to attract for 2022, precisely because of all, all what we have been doing, and that that would be a, a very positive experience for the destination. And and is Sabora Cabo happening this year, or is, did that get put off? Or I don't, I, uh, I didn't, I don't, I don't know. So far, I think that they were still, or they are still reviewing the options. Okay. Um, uh, but they, they they still haven't confirmed. Probably now that the, the, the situation and destination has improved, and we have been moved to level two, and if the situation continues to be under control, probably I'm sure they they will try to revisit. The decision and see if they can they can participate in in any any small uh, smaller type of event. Um, but let's see. You know, th th things have changed so much, uh, so many, so much because now the market is uh, taking a decision to travel with six days in advance. So it's not as before where six months in advance or nine months in advance people were deciding and booking the trips. Now they are taking the decision two months in advance. So there is really time to prepare and schedule things with much short notice than, than before. 
But I, I, I hope I hope that we can get back to these events. I mean, Sabor Cabo is one of my favorite events. And it, it, for those of you that don't know about it, it's put on by Canarac, which is the Association of Restaurants. And I don't know the exact words for the acronym, but uh, it's it's an incredible event where every restaurant gets a chance to, to show what they do and people walk around and there's always some incredible music talent there and uh, usually a famous artist. And so it's it's a great one of my one of my favorite events in in Los Cabos, and hopefully we can get back. It's, it's such a community event as well, so it's it brings together everyone in the in the community. So it's a, it's a great thing. Well, what else do you have for Rodrigo? <laughs> I have so many questions. I'm full of questions for Rodrigo. Well, everybody knows that that tourism is the main driver of of our economy, um, and and we are seeing development happening, very high end development happening towards um, the East Cape, La Ribera with Costa Palmas, Aman is coming and, and I mean, that's about as high end as, as it gets. Um, the development moving in that direction is obviously attracting a high end traveler. And I know that Los Cabos has been working to, to adapt to those needs. How, how is that going? Is, is there a, a growth in this kind of like hybrid private flights, what's happening in, in that segment? Well, that's really a big opportunity that uh, what we have, we have been tracking, for example, the travelers that earn more than $200,000 as a household income, um, as, as what are their travel characteristics when they come to a destination and what are the drivers uh, for them to decide to come. So of course, no surprise that um, sport fishing is one of them, golf, uh, and real estate, as you just pointed out, um, the, there has been a boom in the United States in terms of real estate because of the low interest rate. And there's a lot of, of money in circulation in general. So that is being affecting the, the sales, the real estate sales in, the, in, in Los Cabos. And in particular, is connected to those developments because the, the four seasons so they are where Costa Palma is located, for example, as you know, they, there's a real estate component that is very strong, and it's the same with the other destination, with the other properties that we were discussing. St. Regis has uh, all the condos. I think 60% of the condos are already sold, and uh, the due date of the project is late 2022. So well in advance, those condos have been already uh, placed, and and it's the same with other key developments um, that we have uh, in, in um, for example where the, the second four season is going to be located in the tourism corridor that is also connected to uh, a real estate opportunity that is moving up. And um, the, the destination, we, as you know, there is a network that is called Virtuoso that is in the, in the world, one of the biggest luxury product networks. Um, and the, in order for a hotel to qualify to be included in the network, there has to comply with a lot of different things. And, and we have 11, 11 hotels in the destination uh, as part of this network. Hawaii, to put it in, in, in comparison, Hawaii has seven uh, in total. Uh, so there is no other destination that has 11 hotels included in the, in the network. And with many of them that we are discussing new ones that would be at the same level. So in the next two or three years, Los Cabos is going to be really the, the, the luxury center for whatever is happening in the travel industry. And, and especially because if you stay in a property in Costa Palmas and then you stay uh, on, on, on the Pacific or the corridor, it, it will be a totally different experience. So it, it, that, that would really help us to, to step up in the luxury that's great. That's great. And I think. Seen, uh, and we are providing to the travelers the highest level of uh, guy. Wonderful. In terms of, of Mexico competition, at, at one point, I guess, the, the one destination that was attracting high net worth uh, travelers in the younger segment was definitely Tulum. I had the opportunity to visit Tulum uh, not long ago. And, and it baffles me how people are spending the amount of money that they're spending in a place with as little infrastructure as Tulum. It is also known that um, Tulum attracted some of the 
the beach clubs and the the names that are well known in Europe in 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 Ibiza and and Saint Tropez and the, where the really really wealthy go. And now the um, we hear that some of these groups are coming to Cabo. Is that a fact? And 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 do you are you working towards attracting that younger crowd that that is looking for a more kind of like um, finding yourself soulful um, experience where, where you connect not just with with the glossy places, but but with the land and with the people. And you have an experience that enriches your soul because I believe that that was the platform that that Tulum used to, to promote and to sell and to make it so so popular. How is is uh, Cabo reacting to that? Um, and in, is that a segment that that it's looking to attract? Well, the, the on in terms of age brackets uh, of the travelers to the destination, definitely it, it's um, since one and a half years ago it's been skewing a little bit younger. Uh, but it's very well divided between what we could say the, the Z generation, uh, the uh, millennials and the, and the X uh, travelers and the, and the baby boomers. So it's, it's very well divided in, in almost in equal um, participation. And I think that goes to the fact of what the supply of the destination is, that we have uh, product and experiences for each of the of the age segments. If uh, you're a baby boomer and you want to come or you traditionally have come, you will keep finding exactly what you want. But if you are younger and you want to find some vibe type of connection uh, in, a, in a very different type of uh, geography and setting, because Los Cabos is totally different from what it is to Loom, you will definitely have a very nice vibe. And for example, all what is going through in um, Pescadero and Todos Santos region, uh, that is attracting precisely a, a, a younger audience that uh, is looking to be in a much more relaxed uh, type of setting, not as neat as, um, as, as things could be. So I think uh, we, we will keep uh, growing and diversifying. Um, uh, what we need to do is to keep the focus on sustainability and the care for the environment. That I think is, is very important that uh, we do it, uh, whatever all things are happening around the world, we need to make sure that the Sea of Cortez, for example, that is so fragile uh, with 30% of the marine mammals, that that's protected and that other very particular situations uh, that we have, for example, the, uh, you, you were discussing before about the road trip for the Baja area. And, and you, you know that there are some specific areas that the whales come every year. Mm -hmm. And at some point you have uh, during the year more than 150 whales uh, just in, in those areas. And that is protected because that is what makes us totally different from what is happening in, in other parts. So I think Yes, we are working to attract a younger audience and to provide the best level of experience to different travel segments, uh, but we need to make sure that the key differences that we have are maintained. Yes, definitely, definitely. That's, I, I, I lived in that area of, of um, the Caribbean. I lived in Cozumel in the 80s, and I knew Tulum back in the 80s, and it was, incredibly beautiful. And I hadn't gone back to Tulum in more than 15 years. And I can, I, I mean, it personally broke my heart to see what it, it is now. And, and I, that's why I, it just baffles me why it's so popular when it's not even, um, it doesn't come close to what it used to be. And, and that's a, a clear example of what over, crowding a place that is so delicate, delicately balanced can do. So um, that's great that, that we're learning from, from those things and, and we're, we're caring for our, the balance of our ecosystem. Because sometimes people think the desert is tough and in reality, it's so delicate and, and we have to be so, so careful of how it is developed and how we introduce things and how we remove things um, to, to create developments and, and bring progress. So I'm happy to hear that. Hey, Cla Claudia, do you have, we have about, we have about five minutes left. Do you have any other questions for Rodrigo before I start talking about sharks? How's, how are the sharks? Let's talk about the sharks. <laughs> 
they 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 are fantastic. You know, the the, the sharks are fantastic because um, as as we have discussed every year, they are there are more sharks because they they are protected and uh, traditionally they are in Cabo Pulmo they are always in one place in one spot that is El Vencedor where, where the sunk boat uh, but now this this part of the of the season they be moving to El Islote uh, that traditionally they have been they have not been there um, so but they've been there and uh, I think it's fantastic uh, what, what uh, we have in the in the Sea of Cortez. Um, and, and, and those are the silky sharks, uh, what you are showing. And I, well, I want to show off. I want to show off because this, that's my fin right there. And here's, here's me with a shark because you inspired me, Rodrigo, to go swim with sharks. Actually, Claudia also went, we didn't, when Claudia went, we did not see any sharks, but the second time we went, we had some silky. Now we were out in the middle, so we weren't, these aren't the big sharks that you're swimming with, right? You're swimming with bull sharks. There are two types of sharks, and that's why it's so so rich the the region because you, you have uh, reef sharks that those are in the in the Cabo Pulmo area that is a reef, but you have pelagic sharks. The silky is a pelagic as well as the mako, and uh, the sharks that are moving depending on the on the season. Those are pelagic uh, sharks. They migrate. Uh, the, the hammerhead, uh, the, the, so the, right now we are in the silky shark because they like warm water. So as soon as it starts getting a little bit colder, they, they go out to other parts and some others uh, come. So I, I think that's very good. I, where did you see them? In Punta Gorda, in the, towards uh, the Sea of Cortez? Uh, it was actually, it was a Punta Gorda. I think that's, it was, it was that. Yes, yes, yes. The Gordo that's Banks. Not... Is that Punta Gorda? The Gordo yeah. Banks? Yeah. Same thing? Okay. Yes. Yeah, around that area. From, yeah. And, and, and what was incredible was we were there and the silky came up. And I guess we were we were at the point because because the Gordo Banks is in the middle of, of the ocean and, and, and there's a there's a there's like a mountain underneath, right? That comes up about a hundred feet down. And this huge hammerhead comes up about a nine foot. We it was so fast, no one got it on on camera, and it came up to check us out and then took off. And it was that was incredibly beautiful. It was it was huge when it when it when it came up. But what a beautiful! I, I lost my fear of being in the water with those animals because I had, I had a fear. And once you're in the water, you're like, oh my gosh, they're just so beautiful. And so I I am still I'm going to go to to Cabo Pulmo and I want to get in the water with the bull sharks. Please do it. And and you know one important thing that people need to remember is that if we care about climate change, we need to protect the sharks because they provide a balance to the oceans. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, th I think we need to get out of the stereotypes that they are dangerous or bad animals and that are affecting the, the because they are not and, and they are providing a good balance for the whole area. And, and we've had Fernanda Nieto on the show with Latitude Encounters and she, and she has talked about this all the time. And really, if you have not swam with sharks, we recommend it highly. And there's, there's, there's several groups that, that, that provide that service. And we'll, we'll have to have her on the show again, Claudia. And uh, we should have Fernanda and Rodrigo. Yes. Talk sharks, the whole show. because yeah. They're fascinating. I mean, talk about an alien looking thing. Hammerheads. Those are alien looking. I mean, they don't, they don't look like they come from this world. Uh, <laughs> Well, and I can tell you, it was all it was all fun and games talking about swimming with sharks. And then when they were they were they chum the waters with with which is also interesting tuna blood. It, it's not they're not attracted to human blood. Sharks aren't, which is such a myth. Mm -hmm. that, that, but but what was interesting is we're on that we're all excited, and all of a sudden here comes this dark. And then you're like, oh, I have to get in the water with that now. <laughs> it is a little bit. But once you're in, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> But we we are coming up against it. But Rodrigo, thank you so much again for being on the show. You're one of our favorite guests. We'll we'll have you back again, and uh, just just great time with you. Thank you again for all the work you've done for Los Cabos. It's going to be an incredible season. I can feel the positivity in the air. Things are things are getting better. The sun is out shining. The water's warm, and just so great to 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 be back in Los Cabos. But thank you so much for for being on the show. Any any final thoughts, Claudia? No, thank you, Rodrigo. I mean, we are fans of everything that you do and that the tourism board does. And uh, thank you for giving us your time because we know how busy you are. No, no, any thank last, you very much. Any last thoughts, Rodrigo? 
No, no, thank you for the, for the opportunity to be talking about Los Cabos and thank you for, you know, always spreading the positive message and informing the community in Los Cabos about what is happening because it's the only way to really make sure that all collectively things are moving up. So uh, thank you very much. Well, very thank nice. you everybody for being at the show and you will catch us next week at 6 p.m. on Sunday and we have we have a couple possible guests that are going to be really cool so we'll it'll be exciting we'll let you know earlier in the, in the week but be back with us next week have a safe week claudia always nice to see you rodrigo thank you again and we'll see you next week catch you next time all right excellent that was good Live facebook world oh we're still on facebook yeah. bye